What a guan, what a guan, what a guan. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday. Got a great show tonight for you. A little bit more advanced than usual. I know we've been doing some of the basics. Calories in, calories out. How to exercise. Basic, basic things. Nutrition 101 type stuff. But today we're getting a little bit more advanced. We're going to talk about what you should eat before your workout, during your workout, and after your workout to maximize weight loss. And, of course, build some muscle. Whether you're a guy or girl, muscle is good. Obviously for the guys, but a lot of ladies don't know, building muscle makes the glutes, the derriere, everything, lower body looks fantastic. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be hitting today. So let's see, who do we have in the chat? Welcome, Tamika. Hey, how's it going? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Sikamitis, peace. Hello, Igwe's daughter. Hello, Positive Therapist. Hello, Skincare Do's and Don'ts. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, do hit that like button. I'm always forgetting to ask people to hit the damn like button. So yes, hit that like button. <laughs> Likes are free, right? Likes are free. They don't cost anything. They don't cost a thing. They don't cost a thing. All right, so without further ado, I think we can get right into the advanced topic. Again, we'll have a QA and a session at the end, right? But... Throw your comments out there. Feel free to call in. I'll drop the link. Ask your questions. I'm sure you guys are going to have questions for sure. All right, let's get into it. You eat before, during, and after your workout to maximize muscle growth and body composition. This question refers to what's called peri-workout nutrition, which just means the timing of nutrients around a workout. And let me start by saying that while I will be giving detailed meal examples in this video, it's important that we start with what the science actually says about this question in the first place. Why does peri-workout nutrition matter at all? Well, in a now infamous paper titled Nutrient Timing Revisited, Aragon and Schoenfeld, quote, challenged the classic view of post-exercise nutritional intake with respect to anabolism. And this is somewhat controversial because up until this study, it was always known, according to bro science, when you finish your workout, guzzle some protein shake, right? Eat as soon as possible. Eat as soon as possible. Many science lovers took this single paper to be the nail in the coffin for the bro's now outdated anabolic window concept. Apparently, nutrient timing didn't matter after all. Well, it turns out many of the science guys may have jumped to conclusions a little too quickly because- Surprise, surprise. Well, you know, the bros got it right after all. There's something to be said for people who are in the trenches, right? Actually testing things out, not in the ivory tower, but actually testing things out to see if they actually work or not. You know, if you see a guy or a lady with a fantastic body and they're doing something, that something probably works. They may not be able to explain it scientifically, <laughs> but it probably works, right? Even in this very paper, the authors suggest that pre and post exercise meals shouldn't be separated by more than three to four hours. That's important. So basically, you people out there who just go work out and do whatever afterwards, they're saying here very clearly the pre and post workout meal should not be separated by more than three to four hours, right? This includes the pre, as you'll see. It's very critical. Or maybe five to six hours if you eat a large pre workout meal. Let's just meet in the middle and say four to five hours between the pre and post workout meals is the true size of the science based anabolic window. So the peri workout window definitely matters, but it matters more for some than it does oh. for others. It's more important. So to be clear, you eat your pre workout meal. Right. Say you had a meal at five, you went to the gym, you finished eating the gym, you need to eat again. Right. The window starts, the clock starts counting from the moment the pre workout meal. And let's pretend you didn't eat the pre workout meal. You need to eat even sooner after the workout, just to make sure we're clear. You eat a pre workout meal, you work out, you need to eat. You didn't eat the pre workout meal, you need to eat even sooner. Very important, both from a scientific point of view and just common sense and logistical point of view. What do I mean by this? Let's say you finish your workout at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., right? You dilly-dally and dawdle around, and it's now 8, 9, 10 p.m., and you have dinner, right? Okay. But suppose you only had two small meals before that, or three small meals. This is where some of you guys don't get enough protein. Perhaps if you had those little meals, you should have had a shake post-workout to then have dinner, like two hours after that. Right. So you don't want to dilly dally. 
important if you're leaner because you have a lower nutrient supply. It's more important if you're on lower total calories because you're at a higher risk of muscle loss. And it's more important for those who do higher volume bodybuilding style training, which depletes more nutrients than lower volume powerlifting workouts. Now, before we hop into the specific... Right, rewind this a little bit here. I'm not sure you guys caught this part about if you're on fewer calories, if you're on lower calories. A lot of you guys are already starving, right? You're not eating enough or you're dieting. So if you're on lower calories, you really <laughs> can't emphasize, you really need to eat on a damn food after a workout. Maybe if I, if I talk like that, it will sink in. I don't know. And it's more important for those who do higher volume bodybuilding style training, which depletes more nutrients than lower volume powerlifting workouts. Now, before we hop into the specifics, there's a future video that I'm trying to make that I really need your guys' help with. So if- Well, this is actually some quite some time ago. So we're gonna use the time machine to fast forward through that. Okay, here we go. All right, so the pre-workout meal is the single most important meal of the day, in my opinion. That's because it'll ultimately determine- You guys have heard me say this before, right? I said, in a perfect world, if you could eat all your calories surrounding your workout, that'd be optimal. The before and after, why is this? You need the food before to fuel the machine, your body, to crush it in the gym or playing tennis or whatever the hell it is you're doing, right? After you finish crushing it, you need the food to repair, to build, etc. right? Just think of a high performance car. You gotta fuel it up, put oil in the engine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So pre and post workout is very important. As a matter of fact, I interviewed an NFL linebacker. You can see it's one of my first videos that I did. So it's way back. I'll put a link to this in the show notes later. And he pointed out, even with his fantastic genetics, dude put on like, let's say, 30, 40 pounds of muscle in a couple of months. Crazy genetics, right? When you get to the NFL, you're obviously not, obviously you have elite genetics, world-class genetics, perfect six-pack, incredible physique, Adonis-looking physique. Even he said when he wasn't doing stuff like this pre-workout meals, when they finally got on it, even he could see the difference. So if this super duper athlete can see the difference, you need to be doing the same thing, right? Because you don't got his genetics. So if he's doing it, who are you to not be doing it? And how effective your training is, which ultimately drives muscle growth. And there are two main purposes of the pre-workout meal. The first is to fuel the workout, primarily via carbohydrate. And the second is to provide an anabolic environment during training, primarily via protein. Now, when it comes to the macros for the pre-workout meal, I aim for about one gram of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight, ideally coming from a lower glycemic carb source, plus a serving of fruit. This combination of carb sources will provide more sustainable energy through the workout, since different carbohydrates use different transporters, meaning different rates of absorption and more sustainable performance during training. In layman's terms, combine slow digestion carbs like a sweet potato, with faster digestion carbs, like fruit, kiwi fruit in this case, right? That's pretty much what he's saying. Slow with a little fast. Gives you a unique mix to maximally power the workout in the pre-workout meal. I'll also aim for about 0.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight and 0 to 20 grams of fat, depending on how close the meal is to the workout itself. Because Notice, not much fat. I mean, granted, in this case, talking about, you know, lifting weights, but I distinctly remember when I do in cardio, in my genius idea, I decided to have a shake before. Another time I had protein before. Needless to say, my stomach was not too happy when I had to do the run. Because whenever we met for training on the day spin day, doing pedaling hard, they would make us do a run after to simulate the race. Trying to run a 5K as fast as possible after going on the bike forever was, yeah, yeah protein and high intensity does not go well together. As dietary fat slows oh, digestion down, meals eaten closer to the workout should contain less fat, and meals eaten further from the workout should contain more fat. The more fat further away is to slow the digestion. That's the logic here, right? You're going close to the workout. You want the amino acids to be in your bloodstream. You're not trying to slow down digestion at that point. That's why whey protein, all these protein shakes, get that stuff into your system quicker than sitting and eating a solid meal. That's the benefits. Which brings me to the next question. When should we eat the pre-workout meal? Well, up front, I was a bit surprised to learn that 33% of you don't eat a pre-workout meal at all. I'm not surprised at that at all. Before I got my coaches, I never ate a pre-workout meal. I never even heard of a pre-workout meal. I'm sure a lot of you haven't heard of a pre-workout meal either. 
put the one in the chat if you have actually heard of the concept pre-workout meal. And put the second one if you actually eat one, even if you've heard of one. Pretty sure there's got to be a few number of you guys that have actually done that. One, one, if you've heard of the pre-workout meal. Two ones if you actually do a pre-workout meal. If you don't answer, I'm going to assume you're, you have no clue what we're talking about here. That you didn't have a clue, I should say. But now you do. And knowing is half the battle, G.I. Joe. Because you train fasted. And that's okay. And I'll have some advice for you guys here in a minute. First, for the other 67%, eating 1 to 1.5 hours before training is usually ideal because if you eat the pre-workout meal too close to training, the food might still be digesting and that can cause you to feel lethargic or bloated. On the other hand, if you... So this is a case-by-case -case basis. I've had it before where, you know, by the time I ate, it was like 30, 40 minutes later, whatever the meal was just light. And depending on the workout, I'm not going to eat 30 minutes before leg day. That's not going to work. 30 minutes before back and biceps day, 40 minutes, yeah, that could work. Chest, no, because I got a laid on my back, then that feels kind of weird to me. But if I got to stand doing curls or sit doing, you know, lat pull downs, I can do that. But if I'm going to deadlift that day again, you don't want 30 or 40 minutes. <laughs> it depends on the workout is what I'm saying. You don't want to eat 30 minutes before running around playing basketball or playing tennis, right? Time your meal too far from training, you run a higher risk of having low energy or feeling lightheaded. So that's my sweet spot, but sometimes it's just not possible to wait an hour or an hour and a half after eating because of time constraints. Sometimes you're just forced to hit the gym on short notice, in which case you'll want to focus on eating a lower calorie meal with faster digesting foods. And by the same token, if you know you're- A good example of that, protein shake, whey protein shake. I got that tip from a coach of mine. You know, between sessions, if he had a client finishing it, he knew he had a window before his workout. Say he had a client that's going to finish at 5. At around 4.45, 4.30, he would just have a shake during the session. So when he finished with the client, he would just go straight to his workout. If you're going to train more than 1 to 1 1.5 hours after eating, you want to have a higher calorie meal and prioritize foods that digest more slowly. Okay, so let's start with a pre-workout meal example based on a 175 pound, roughly 80 kilo male who plans to train in about an hour to an hour and a half. Based on his body weight and the macro targets that we laid out, he'll want about 80 grams of carbs, 40 grams of protein, and 10 to 15 grams of fat. Note how big that protein number is, because I know a lot of you guys don't remotely come close to eating one gram per pound of body weight, right? For those of you who actually track, you're probably like, what, 80 grams, 60 grams, 100, 120? And you don't weigh 80 pounds, right? Exactly. So for this meal, we're making a good old bowl of protein oatmeal. So basically cook 80 grams of oats and mix in one scoop of protein powder. I use PE Science Select Protein, which is a blend of casein and whey, and it mixes really well with oats. Now, full disclosure, I am sponsored by them. And shout out to my girlfriend, Stephanie, for the cake pop flavor idea. Top the oats with a sliced banana, half a tablespoon of peanut butter, and a pinch of cinnamon, which may help keep blood glucose levels more stable into the workout, and a sprinkle. And if you do the C C cinnamon, it has to be Ceylon cinnamon. That's C-E-Y-L-O-N. Regular cinnamon doesn't have this effect he's talking about, just so you know. ...of sea salt, especially if you sweat a lot during training. And you can see the full calorie and macro breakdown of the meal here, which, of course, you can tweak to fit your body weight and total daily calories. Oh, and if you wanted to make this meal vegan, you could just easily swap out the whey casein blend for a vegan protein, like a pea and brown rice blend. And if it doesn't give the right consistency in the oats, you could just drink it separately as a shake. Next, let's look at a pre-workout meal for a 120 pound or 55 kilo female who will be training a bit later, so in roughly two hours. Again, based on her body weight, she'll want about 27 grams of protein, 55 grams of carbs, and 10 to 15 grams of fat. And because this meal is being eaten two hours before training, it'd be smart to have a bit more fat than usual and a bit more fiber than usual to slow down digestion and ensure nutrients are still available for fuel into the workout. So for this meal, we're doing... So some of you, when you do your workers and you talk about being tired, you think you get this, you got that, blah, 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 your energy. This is why your ass don't got no energy, right? Because on a name, eat a pre-workout meal. How you expect if you have energy, if you don't eat food? Tell me. Or you can eat 1,000 calories a day, 800 calories a day, 1,200 calories a day, and you want to work out one, two, three, four, five, six times a week. Some of them even work out twice a day, twice a day. You're burning the candle on both ends in that case. And this is why on a tired or you can't build no muscle, you're still curling the same amount you were curling six months ago. Your bench press can't increase. You're trying to lose weight. You can't lose weight. Trying to fit in those pants, you can't fit in those pants. This is why. 
It's all about the food, all about the food. Four ounces of salmon, a medium-sized sweet potato, a mixed green salad with some light goat cheese, plus some apple slices with cinnamon. And here you can see the full calorie and macro breakdown for this meal. As a third example, let's- Notice these meals are delicious looking, right? The man is not eating like him in prison or something. These are all nice tasting meals. You can swap things out, but you can't swap things out if you're not tracking it all. Because otherwise you're just guessing. This man got a food scale. You saw the food scale, I hope, right? You need a scale. You need a food scale, right? Sitting there measuring stuff, that's going to take you forever. That's going to take you forever. Buy a food scale. I think I recommend one in my show notes. No, actually, I don't. I got to add that. Make a mental note. Consider someone who's in a rush and needs to train within the next 20 to 30 minutes and hasn't eaten for hours. They should definitely eat something, but if they have a big meal, they might feel bloated or sluggish. So in this case, I'd recommend something light and quick, like a whey protein shake and a banana. Hey, I think he copied me. I think he copied me. <laughs> These nutrients need to be absorbed quickly, so we don't want much fat or fiber. And here you can see the full macro breakdown for this quick snack on the fly. All right, but what if you're one of the 33% who trains fasted? Well, let's remember the two reasons why pre-workout nutrition matters in the first place, to fuel training performance and to create an anabolic environment. When it comes to fueling the workout, yes, generally speaking, having at least some amount of carbohydrate before training will benefit performance. However, I know from my coaching experience that some people simply will perform better when they train on an empty stomach. That's usually because they train very early in the morning and either don't have the appetite or feel sick and nauseous if they eat right away. This isn't a deal breaker. World record holding powerlifter Russell Orhe trained fasted for years. And while I think he's recently switched away from that, he was still able to reach truly elite level strength and size without a pre-workout meal. However, if you are planning on skipping the pre-workout meal, then the intra-workout and post-workout meals suddenly become much more urgent. So. I've met people, you know, them said them wake up in the morning, them go work out. That's fine. No problem. Of course, you, you're typically not hungry in the morning. Although worst case, you can still drink a shake. You can always drink a shake, you know, with no appetite. You just drink it, right? <laughs> just force the damn thing down. Anyway, then finish the workout and then go get ready and go work. And I'm like, what about the post-workout meal? Then them wait till them get to lunchtime. And then wonder why them can't gain no muscle. Them can't lose no weight. That is why the body will rebel eventually. You can't keep doing this to your body. You're stressing out your body. On that note, let's cover intra-workout nutrition or what you should consume during the workout itself. Caveat here. Pre-workout, most people don't know. Intra-workout is where people go crazy and they overdo it. Then they're barely doing anything in the gym. Their workouts are my warm-up, essentially. And them feel so they must drink a couple of Gatorade, some pre-work, some intra-workout stuff. Drinking a gazillion calories, then burn two or three hundred, and then drink five hundred, and again, then wonder why them can't lose weight. That would be why. From one extreme to the next, they just guzzling stuff down. They don't look at the bottle and go, "Oh wow, it says two servings." Oh damn, I just drank the whole bottle. Now, up front, I'll say that intra-workout nutrition definitely isn't required for everyone, especially if you've already had a well-timed pre-workout meal. See. Not required. But there are a few circumstances where it does make sense. If you train fasted, if you're in a caloric deficit and already very lean. And already very lean. So if you're trying to lose weight, clearly you're not already very lean, right? If your workouts last longer than an hour. Most of y'all ain't working out longer than an hour. I mean, I lift weights for an hour and a half pretty easily, right? Minimum is an hour workout for me. But if you're all in there for 40 minutes, what you drinking your Gatorade and your power for? What? What? What you doing this for? No reason. That's just wasted calories. You burnt a bunch of calories, then you're going to drink it on during your workout. That don't make no kind of sense, you know, no kind of sense. Or if you're an elite level trainee trying to optimize every little detail. And if any of these apply to you, I definitely recommend having some kind of liquid carb source during your workout, such as Gatorade, Kool-Aid, or Tang, to fuel performance. As a general rule of thumb, I recommend 0.5 grams of carbohydrate per minute of training, starting about 30 minutes into the workout. So if your workouts last 90 minutes, you'd consume 30 grams of carbs starting 30 minutes in. However, if you're cutting and you'd rather not waste that many carbs on liquid sugar, then even just five to 10 grams of carbohydrate can go a long way for stabilizing blood glucose and turning a bad workout into a good one. And if you do train fasted or just want some extra anabolic insurance, you can optionally add five to 10 grams of EAAs or essential amino acids, or if you don't wanna drop any extra cash on EAAs, just sip on about 10 grams of whey protein. 
again, he's trying to get those amino acids in his bloodstream before the workout, right? This is very critical. Okay, so the urgency of the post-workout anabolic window has definitely been exaggerated by some gym bros. Remember that there is in fact a four to five hour window bracketing the workout, meaning if you ate your pre-workout meal one hour before training, then trained for an hour, you'd theoretically still have two to three hours to play with for getting in that post-workout meal. On the other hand, if you ate your pre-workout meal two hours before training and then trained for two hours, you should get your post-workout meal in as quickly as possible. So same as with the pre-workout meal, I recommend consuming 0.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight post-workout. So if you weigh 180 pounds or 82 kilos, you'd want about 40 grams of protein. Carbs are relatively less important in the post-workout meal because you no longer need to use them as an immediate energy source. And most typical weight training sessions don't actually deplete as much glycogen as some bodybuilders lead on anyway. Plus, research shows that any lost glycogen should be replenished within 24 to 48 hours, as long as you're eating some so again, you know, a lot of people go overboard on the carbs. I need to replenish glycogen stores. Relax, relax, relax. Just eating food by tomorrow when you work out again, you'll be good, you'll be good. Carbohydrate at some point after training. However, because rates of glycogen resynthesis are at their highest within the first few hours following training, it would be smart to include at least some carbohydrate in the post-workout meal. What he's saying here is that in that little window after your workout, that's the time your body is best able to maximize nutrition and best able to handle carbs. So if you wanted to do something naughty, chocolate, cake, whatever, the best time to do naughty is after the workout. The glass of wine you want, wait till you come back from the gym, whatever, right? If you're going to do bad, do bad after your workout. Hell, you can use as motivation. If you want that damn cake or cookie or whatever the hell it is, make sure you go to the gym that day, then have it after the workout minimize the damage, you will feel good. You work out and you had your vice, your sinful delight. Especially if you do full body training or two a day workouts where you'll be hitting the same muscle again within the next day or two. Assuming you have plenty of carbs to spare, then one to 1.5 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight is a good target. However, when cutting, you may be more limited on carbs, in which case something around 0.5 grams per kilogram may be more appropriate and I'd recommend including another serving of fruit in the post-workout meal as well. Now, when it comes to fats, I don't think they're as big of a deal in the post-workout meal simply because rate of digestion is of relatively less importance. The workout has already been fueled and there's typically no major urgency to get those nutrients absorbed as quickly as possible. Still, if you do find yourself on the outer edge of that four to five hour anabolic window, it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep fats down below 10 to 20 grams just to ensure digestion isn't slowed down excessively. Under most circumstances though, this isn't something I personally nitpick over too much. Okay, so let's look at three optimized post-workout meal examples. Up first, again, we have our 175 pound or 80 kilo male with a post-workout macro goal of 40 grams of protein, 80 grams of carbs, and 10 to 15 grams of fat. This is a post-workout meal I'll personally have very often. So I'll mix up a bowl of extra lean ground turkey, jasmine rice, low-fat sour cream, low-fat shredded cheese, and sriracha, and then I'll have a sun gold kiwi as my post-workout fruit source, for obvious reasons. Oh my. And a mixed green salad to hit some veggies. And if you need some extra protein, you can add a glass of milk or just some extra ground turkey as needed to hit your protein target. And here you can see the total calories and macros for this meal. The second example is the 120 pound or 55 kilo female lifter. And she could do something like four ounces of chicken breast or a protein equated amount of tofu as a vegan option with 300 grams of baby golden potatoes, a few steamed Brussels sprouts, a small handful of salted pistachios and hundred grams of mixed blueberries and raspberries. And these are the calories and macros for this meal. And then finally, let's cover someone who trained fasted and has to drive back home or go to work before they can have their next meal in another hour or two. In this case, I would recommend having a protein shake right after training, plus a serving of fruit, like a banana or some grapes. And there's some guys that are infamous, right? I mean, <laughs> some guys, if, if them forget them protein shake, man, them, them willing to run red light, forget to them, forget them protein shake, you know. Uh, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. God forbid them forget them protein shake. You think is an emergency the way I'm driving to get back home. Depending on your total carb intake, perhaps a couple rice cakes as well. So this would be the total macro breakdown for this quick post-workout snack, and then they would have their first whole food meal a couple hours later. And before you guys click out, I want to tell you about a very... So, I'm going to fast forward here a little bit again. Because this stuff he was talking about is not really applicable to what we're talking about here. 
one thing that he did talk about in here too is using my fitness pal which is pretty cool right i've told you guys about this before it is free 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 to be able to track your foods so let's see what we got going on in the chat you guys got any questions you want to comment on the video feel free to call in free coaching advice See if I missed anybody earlier. Hey, needs watches. Good evening to the show. Welcome to the show. The real is she. Hello as well. Hello as well. By the way, yes, Sec Amethyst, I do like your new name, the Lioness of Videography. <laughs> That's a pretty cool name. Yeah, you two people have some really cool names. I gotta admit, I feel very plain with my Kurt D. A. Anderson Fitness. <laughs> So a couple of people had ones in here, but nobody has the double one, right? So nobody both knew and actually used the pre-workout meal as a thing. Okay, I'm disappointed, but not surprised. But you all know now. And remember, once you know, you can't unknow. You can't pretend when you're tired in the gym or you're sore the next day. You never, you never did, right? You never had your pre-workout or your post-workout. That's why you're sore or that's why you're tired, right? No, you know, you know, you know, you know. Okay. Hey, so we got a caller back here. I'm bringing you up, Needs Watches. Bringing you up. Hey, good evening, Needs Watches. How's it going? Like the new logo. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, man. I'm trying to get a little serious here. You know how it is. <laughs> nice, I got, uh, nice. yeah, new banners, some other stuff, man. Uh, okay, Fiverr. okay. I tell you what, Fiverr's a hell of a place. Yep. Um, I use they, Fiverr too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get anything on there. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess my question, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I watched, I think, almost from the beginning. Okay. And this is kind of why it's so valuable to have different content creators. Because mm -hmm. like I couldn't really follow what my man was talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm asking you. Okay. So like yeah. it's the title, right? What to eat before, during, and after. I know. Right. There's a little bit of variance, like before and after. Mm -hmm. But like, can I get like the cliff notes? Like, all right, what do I eat before? what I eat after. I know some of it, you know, has to do with your weight and your macros, mm -hmm. right? But just like as a general question. Right. Like if you had to layman's terms like, hey, mm -hmm. baseline, this is what you should have before. Right. This is what you should have after. What would you say? Okay. Good very good very good question. Thanks for the question. So what I kept trying to do is pausing it and converting to so Jeff Nippard is fantastic. He has almost probably two million no no sorry three million subscribers actually. So, but he gets pretty techy, you know, as, as you notice. That's why I was trying to pause then say, in layman's term, this is what he means. Basically, to keep it very simple, what you want to do is have a meal before the workout. One hour. I would say shoot for one hour because it's hard to get it right. Meaning, say you ate your meal at five to quote unquote workout at six, you'd have to leave your house. Say you got a 30 minute commute to the gym at 5 30. But what I find is if you try to do this one and a half hour, two hour thing, next thing you know, it's three hours, right? <laughs> but they shoot for one hour and it go a little over or something to that effect. To keep it simple, you just want to have one of your normal meals, right? It must have protein, it must have carbohydrates and not too much fat. So for example, skinless chicken thighs or shrimp, or you wouldn't want to have, uh, let me give an example, a steak before, right? The, too much fat. Too much fat right there. So you want some kind of relatively lean piece of protein, like a lean fish or something, for example. You wouldn't want to have something that's very fatty. So I would need uh, leg and thigh before, for example, or something. Okay. No KFC before. Well, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. Nothing like that. Have, probably right? shouldn't have KFC at all, right? And you want some <laughs> carbs. To keep it simple, just eat whatever carb source you like to eat. What rice, sweet potato, like what do you typically have with you want your dinner, for example? This is almost like having a dinner before the workout. That's a good way to think of it. Having like a small dinner before the workout. So what, what do you typically have for dinner that's carbs for you? Um, for carbs? I've, yeah. I would say like, well, for dinner, because I mean, normally I work out in the morning. Okay. All right. So then like, you know, like the oatmeal, which I don't know. I try to get like, you know, without sugar. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably the go-to as far as like kind of a, a carb. Yeah, rich. oatmeal is good. Oatmeal okay. is good. Oatmeal would um, work. That would work. So for you in the morning, oatmeal could work very easily if you could actually eat the oatmeal and then work out, for example. Right, right. right? Um, or in the evening, a typical thing would be some kind of starch like rice, yeah. sweet potato, that kind of thing, right? And this okay. is where he has the math behind if you want to sit there and calculate. I've done this before. But generally speaking, it's just think of a 
normal size dinner because it's it's enough food that an hour later your stomach would feel fine enough for you to actually go work out. Okay. So a good way to look at it, you know, to keep it simple as you point out, right? So yep, a decent sized piece of protein, like say five to eight ounces of fish, chicken, some kind of you know, meat, let's say. And I don't know, 100, 200 grams of carbs. It depends. Just look at the plate. You can eyeball this, right? But you do, most people at first don't feel it. But whenever I've gotten people to do it, they can feel the difference. So like, when I work out, hour and a half into the work or two hours, I don't stop because I'm tired. I stop because the workout is done. I've been in the gym like three, four hours. And I literally did not run out of energy. No lie. <laughs> uh, okay. I so, mean, I, you and I connected on Instagram. I could probably take screenshots of my WhatsApp message and send it to you, which sounds crazy. I I was like, damn, I've been here four hours. Let me stop now. And this is because I had a pre workout meal and I had my coconut water that I was drinking during the workout. So I was just bundled full of energy. Bundle of energy. It was like a Saturday, I think. Yeah. It was a, it was a weekend day. So for us, more on the beginner level, right? Yeah. Or because I, I don't know if anyone in the chat. I mean, kudos if you do a four-hour workout. Yeah. yeah, I'm not there yet, brother. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was an accident. I do okay. not recommend doing this. This is purely, I, I had not worked out in must be like two weeks or something. And this is having so much fun. I decided I was trying out. I did my workout and I was trying out different things. And next thing you know, oh, wow, it's four hours. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah, because I mean, an hour is pretty An hour is enough. Me. An hour is um, enough. I would agree. Hour is enough. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So more, you want to kind of load up, not load up, but you want yeah. more carbs, less fat before your workout. And if I heard right. him right, the post-workout is more fat, less carbs. Mm, not necessarily. No. Okay, that's and that's no, why no. I wanted the clarification. Sure getting confused, yeah. Because in both scenarios, you want to absorb the food quickly. Okay. In the pre-workout, just think of, so before, you, you probably hear this in sports, they're talking about their pre-game meal, right? You hear this in football, like American football, right? Their pre-game meal. That's why they have a meal before the game. This is exactly why they do this, because they want all that energy, et cetera, et cetera. Then after the game, they want the post-workout meal. So literally, I remember my second coach telling me, he's the guy that said this to me first. He was like, the two most important meals of the day, Kurt, is the one before the workout and the one after. If you get these two right, you can screw up on the other meals. But you get those two wrong, you're not going to change. And this is where a lot of people go wrong, right? They just eat and work out. There's no plan, no structure. They just eat food. They don't track. So one level is to start tracking. You're doing that. Great. The next level up from that now is to time the meals with a purpose, right? Got it. You know, you, you, you want that strategy now. So you are eating, I mix make, make up a number, 2,000 calories in the day. When do you want to have 500 of them and another 500? Optimally, It'd be before the workout and after. Then you can play with the other thousand throughout the day. Your breakfast, well, in your case, you work out in the morning. So, you know, if you can actually eat or drink something like a shake, but then afterwards, you definitely need, in your case, do you work out faster or do you have something before? I have something before. Okay, good. So you can have a decent sized thing before and again, crush it afterwards. You get this window, right? This window where, for example, you're more, you're less likely to store carbs as fat, basically. Gotcha. You know, your blood sugar management is optimized. That's why I was saying, if you want to do something naughty, that's the best time to do something naughty. Like when I was pre-diabetic and I bought the blood sugar monitor, I could see the difference. It was crystal clear. You eat food, mm -hmm. it shoots up to this level and comes down two hours later. You work out, you eat food, it's already down. <laughs> it's Got already it. down, right? I mean, it's one thing to read the science, and it's thing to try it out on yourself, so... I am truly a believer in this stuff, right? The, but the science is out there for sure. There's no disputing this. Got it. Okay, no, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. And yeah, like I said, he was he was kind of getting like you said a little too techy with Very him. I was like, wait, did I yeah, did I, yeah. did I miss <laughs> something? Or okay, so no, that no, makes no, sense. no, no, no. Because if you want to, you know, get real technical based on your weight and this the really optimized thing, but that is not necessary. If if all you do. In your, for example, in your case, it's supposed to eat your breakfast or a breakfast and then work out. You're ahead of 90% of the people. Got it. Got <laughs> and then you eat a meal afterwards. And trust me, people usually feel the difference. They usually feel the difference. If you work out for an hour and you're used to just working or whatever, and then you start eating a pre-workout meal and you truly pay attention to how you feel like 40 minutes in, an hour in, 
how do the weights feel the same or say you're playing tennis or whatever do you if you pay attention to how you feel you will notice a difference but you really have to pay attention you're like yeah wow you yeah, normally i'd be flagging after 40 minutes right but now right. i'm just a bundle of energy 60 minutes in i could keep going right Okay, and then no, on the post, sorry, one other thing on the post workout meal, what you'll notice is less pain. For example, leg day is a good example. Ugh. Most people have their legs, yeah, you, <laughs> that's a painful thing, right? So, proper eating can shave a day off the pain. You know, this thing called DOMS, D O M, mm-hmm. delayed onset yeah. muscle soreness. So, let's say you the legs Monday, they're sore Tuesday, and they're really sore Wednesday, then they're less sore Thursday. With a proper post workout meal, they're slightly sore Tuesday, and they're a little bit more sore Wednesday. Or they might already start recovering Wednesday. When I, I have to really work out really hard to feel really sore, to be honest. Right, Even when I'm there right. an hour and a half and I'm working out very hard, the next day, yeah, I feel a little soreness, but I'm not in debilitating pain like somebody who worked out less, less hard than me. Because yeah. I, I do all these things, right? I do all these things, and they make a difference. You, you got to give your body the raw materials to repair itself. Right, right. Okay, no, that, that makes yeah. sense. I mean, the only <laughs> only thing that's helped me so far with leg day is riding this bicycle. That has helped yeah. tremendously. <laughs> yes, but, the, the active recovery. The worst thing yeah. you can do after working out is just sit there, and you stiffen up. It's, it's kind of like if you ever had a sprain, or you really hurt yourself, you twist your ankle or whatever, it hurt, but you're moving, it was okay. But then when you finally sit down yeah. and stiffen up, that's when the slightest thing you're like, ah, ah ooh, ooh. You, that's when you can't walk no more. No, no, you're limping around the place, hopping, you know, because it's tightened up now, right? Yep. It's, a, it's the same kind of logic. So you notice leg day, if you stand up, you stretch, you go, ah, then you're like, ooh, ah, that feels good. That's what that bike is doing. You go on it at first and you're like, ah, and then a couple minutes later, loosened up you get off yep. the bike your legs feel fantastic you only need to go on it for like five ten minutes at the easy pace to loosen things up then you can go about your day after that you don't even have to break in a sweat literally just pedal at a slow pace for a couple of minutes and it loosens things up yeah no you're, you're absolutely right and i appreciate that clarification that, yeah, that was no perfect because I, I was like what is he talking about yeah so, i realized a lot of these videos because i was trying to in the first one i was doing this i was trying to like prepare and i realized you know what I just need to stop when I think I either have something value to add or when I think this may be confusing to somebody. Like it may, mm-hmm. if it's not very clear, I try to pause and say what he or she is trying to say here is blah, 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 blah. And then I try to give some kind of a story, if possible, to it, or some analogy, you know, talk about football or your a car or what have you. You know, for you, it watches, right? So my guy, he needs watches. He's got a pretty good YouTube channel. So if you're trying to buy watches or a watch, listen to this channel, because the, the world of watches has changed. <laughs> so <I realize laughs> yeah. You can't just roll up into the store and buy a watch like you used to. So even there, there's a strategy, right? For the person mm-hmm. who just rolls up in there, they'll get one outcome. For somebody that watches your channel, they'll get a totally different outcome because they're, they have a plan. They have a strategy. What to do with this authorized dealer for this particular brand, what time to go, what they're trying to do to say they already have, they have, they have that, that second person, it's going to have a much better outcome than the first person. You know, you, right now you are in that second category of what you're doing, like the active workout to keep your legs loose or having your pre-workout meal, a post-workout meal, tracking your calories. This is why you'll be changing. You already said you were down six months the last time we spoke. If you keep yep. this up and you're just, you're not doing anything crazy. You're riding a bicycle. Most people are like, that's all you're doing. Yeah, because it's all about the diet. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You can have... walk your way to losing six pounds or 30 pounds. Lots of yeah. people have done this, right? For sure, for sure. I have one uh, last question, and I'll yeah, let you sure, get back sure. to it. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on uh, pre-workout, like the supplement, you know, Those, like pre-workout? So I put together mine. I'm not a fan of buying the pre-workout because it so says you – you know, supplements are just not regulated, right? And you have Correct. a lot of garbage out there. And I remember taking pre-work. I've heard bad stories about pre-work with supplements. And personally, I know one time I was taking pre-work supplements. I remember doing regular labs and my liver enzymes had gone up. And I remember going, what the hell? And I figured, trace it back to the pre workout right? Don't know what was in it. And if you Google these people, you'll see some of these companies have been sued, you know, or yeah, the supplements industry can be very shady, right? So Companies that I trust, like Thorn or Uplicant, I'll just buy the individual things. Like I'll buy taurine or I'll buy, get my essential amino acids. I 
make mine, quote unquote. <laughs> you know, so I'll get have three bottles and I'll take three different things versus buying one concoction, which has everything in it, because I don't know what else is in it, to be honest. So some of these things, you take them, you get all fired up and you get jittery. I don't know what's causing that. Is it the caffeine? Is it the this? Is it the that? Who the hell knows? You know? Uh, yeah. So okay. long story short, do not, I do not recommend pre-workouts. Okay. No, that's perfect. Um, yeah. And that actually made me, uh, reminded me of one other thing. So I'll ask oh, you all yeah, here. Sure. Have you heard of Transparent Labs? The company? No, what, no, no. What is that? Uh, they're not. supposedly, and I've used them before. It's been a long yeah. time. So, okay. um, but they, um, I guess that's what the name transparent lab. So all the stuff they make, they basically tell you what's in it. Okay. And they oh. also have like a suppository where you can look up other um, companies like whey protein and et cetera, oh, et cetera. Okay. okay. And they supposedly reveal what's in it. It's more expensive than the yeah. other stuff, which yeah. it could be a gimmick. Right. But I wanted to know yeah. if you had heard of it so you could kind of, you know. Yeah. I'm going to do some work with Google them. Transparent lives. Labs, L A B S. Oh, lab. Ah, got it. Sorry, okay. yeah, transparent no, no, labs. No, no, no. Well, the, the price is not an accident because, like my foreign multivitamin, right? A one month supply, it's not cheap. Uh, it's like fifty bucks. Yeah. But it's uh, look at it this way. Sometimes, like for example, fish oil is a good example. <clears throat> if you get low quality fish oil, as in something you get at CVS, Walmart, perhaps, it's actually worse than not getting any fish oil at all because unless they all depending on the fish oil, unless they put certain like antioxidants, antioxidants in there to pres preserve it, it's actually going to go rancid, but you can't smell it and you can't taste it. Oh, wow. So it's actually going to hurt you. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't <laughs> right? know that. Yeah. yeah. Or I said this once in a show, I heard an interview with a guy at a sewage facility and he's saying the number one thing they see there that they know are pills. And the number one pill that they say, or he said he saw was Centrum. And they know it's Centrum because they can read the Centrum on the pill. He said it was like swallowing a stone. It just passes right through you, right? Oh. So some of these supplements out there that are, you buy a bottle and it lasts for a year, they're just not that good. You know, they may say hey, they get it from natural ingredients. Tar is natural. Some of them, they get it from bugs or poop, other things they get their vitamins and minerals from. Because it's natural. They're not lying. It's, it's all natural, right? So there's a reason that some... Granted, some of these supplements are just nonsense. It's total, they've been shown to be fraudulent or what have you. Uh, what is your transparent labs or environmental working group? Right? There's some other websites that will you can Google. It, before I buy anything, I would Google it just to see if anything right. bad pops up. If you just type the name and then bad or bad review or wrong or something negative. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If, if nothing pops up, then that's a good sign. Like if you do thorn bad, nothing's going to pop up. Or some other these good supplements. Uh, what's another one? And they use organic materials. New factor or a new something. Uh, new chapter. New chapter. Right. New chapter. They're okay. sold in uh, Whole Foods and some of the some of the supermarkets have them. New chapter. Okay. They, they get all their minerals and vitamins from organic sources. Um, yeah, but it, it it doesn't pay in the long run to go cheap on the supplements. Where people make a mistake is they're buying an expensive supplement that's really, in my opinion, optional. It's right. not there's some designer type thing, right? Where all they should do is focus on eating and working out. I used to do this mistake all the time. Lots of people do. You, you get carried away with the supplements. It's all about the supplements. But the reality is that guy or lady over there who's just going to the gym regularly, eating decent or good, zero supplements, they will do better than you with all your perfect supplements. And that was me. I was, I was always the guy with all the supplements, <laughs> you know? spending, wasting tons of money on these things. Gotcha. But, uh, no, I appreciate yeah, yeah. it, man. Get a good multivitamin for sure. Uh, and okay. That's very important because it's pretty hard to get everything you need from food nowadays. You know, the soils are depleted, blah, 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 blah. You really have to eat really, really well. So, you know, um, get a good multivitamin. The thorn one, highly recommend that. They have got different types. I just get the elite performance one, I think. Um, and there are the companies there. like I said, New Chapter is pretty good, uh, and a couple other ones out there as well that are pretty good. But yeah, the fact that it's expensive is not necessarily a negative because when it's too cheap, I'm very suspicious of it, to be honest. You know, if you see that's another good tip if you're buying supplement A and it costs ten dollars for the bottle, 
And all the other, you see all these other supplement companies selling the same thing for 30, 40, 50. You should ask yourself, how are they able to sell it for 10? Right. You know, right. There's, there's all these things out there where when they test them, what they claim is in it is not really in it or it's a fraction of it. You know, there's so much garbage out there. <laughs> there's more there, There's more garbage than good supplements of that. I am fairly confident in saying, unfortunately, unfortunately. Okay. But you said the new chapter is pretty good. Yeah, new chapter is good. New chapter is good. I'll check that yeah. out. But no, I appreciate yeah. it, man. I won't take up any yeah. more of your Anytime. time. But thank you. <laughs> Anytime, man. Yeah, feel free to call back if you've got any other questions. All right. Will do. Yeah, if the mods can drop my guy's channel in the chat. Needs watches. A pretty good guy. Yeah, like I said, even if you're not into watches, his shows are very entertaining, right? That's one of the things I discovered on YouTube. You don't have to be into the thing to enjoy watching a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, some people are just very good at telling stories and you find them entertaining. I feel he's one of those gentlemen. Hello, the real is she. No, I already told you hello. So let's see who else, what else we got going on in here? Oh, yes. <laughs> Skincare Doosendo says the food scale helped me realize how I really didn't eat sufficient amounts of food. Yes. And it's a lot quicker. I used to be there measuring things, measuring takes forever. You know, you're stuffing up the a measuring cup of things, man, just wait so much, so much, so much faster, so much faster. I know I saw something funny from the resident comedian Tamika. Where is that? Hmm. Hmm. I know I saw something. It's not this. So Tamika recommends naked whey. It's a grass-fed powder, protein powder. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> my protein powder tastes like poopy. I don't want that ruining my good oatmeal. <laughs> well, Tamika, uh, yes, there are a lot of good proteins that don't taste that good. The brand I use does taste good to me. Um, you know, Mount Capra. Their stuff tastes the vanilla. I'd recommend the vanilla. One thing I tell is don't get chocolate of any any protein powder. Chocolate seems to be extremely difficult. Vanilla, I find vanilla to be the safest flavor for regardless of the brand. The safest flavor to do. Uh, do not get chocolate. <laughs> they seem to not be able to mimic chocolate all that well. Uh, but Mount Capra does not taste bad to me. You could give that give them a try. Yes. This was a good little tip, protein the protein powder and oatmeal. Yeah, I've seen that kind of stuff before where they add protein powder to a meal to enrich it. Yes, here we go. The problem, my problem is that I don't eat my pre post in the time frame suggested. Yeah, the general rule of thumb, you know, is just to keep it simple, right? To paraphrase needs watches. You eat a meal... If you're working, try to get it around. Eat it around when you're going to finish work. And then by the time you figure you get to the gym, you change, your this, you blah, blah, blah. It's close to one hour probably, right? Or even if it's two hours, then you hit it. Or on the weekend, you eat that meal just knowing your head, I need to get to the gym one to two hours from now. Just keep it simple. And then when you finish eating, I would always keep on hand uh, whey protein with me. I don't always use it. Because maybe I finish late. Say I finish a workout late at 8, 9, 10, something. I know that's going to eat dinner, right? So maybe I just don't bother with the shake. Or I make it very liquidy. So it doesn't fool me up. You remember saying, if you fill up the shaker cup like halfway and you make the shake, it's thick, right? Depending on the protein powder that you're using, it's thick. So that can keep you full for two, three hours, depending. But if you want to then eat dinner within two hours, let's say, it's best to... Shake it up and then fill it up with water. So now it's liquid and you just drink it. So an hour, two hours later, you're ready to eat a real solid meal again. That's just a good tip here for you guys out there. You got to be flexible with it. You know, I find that's the safest thing to do, depending on when. Because maybe something happened, you get to the gym late or you get to the gym early. It depends. It depends. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, did my man just say Tang? Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan fan of Tang. Yeah, I, I don't know about the Tang. And even the Gatorade type stuff, coconut water, coconut water, man. Yeah, coconut water crushes all those other things. 
it does. It crushes Gatorade, Powerade, the whole lot of them. You know, it just has way more uh, minerals in there. Way more good stuff in it. Let's see. What else we got going on here? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Tamika is funny. He's so little and cute despite all your tears. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Let's see. You're welcome, Denada. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Ain't nobody regular do no damn for <laughs> Ain't nobody regular do no damn for a worker. <laughs> yeah, that was a fluke. That was a fluke. I've only done that one time. Only one time. Only one time. Yeah, on a regular, it's like between one to two hours. It kind of depends what's going on. Sometimes stuff is going busy and I'm not in the mood. It's just an hour. You know, like say I do chest and triceps. I could be 30 minutes chest, 30 minutes triceps. Or I could just make it one hour with chest, then 30 minutes triceps. It, it all depends. You got to like listen to your body too, right? Listen to your body. Let's see. Yes. Yes, exactly. This is a good way, you know, for those of you who are still resistant or stubborn, <laughs> right? Maybe the leg day will inspire because Tamika says, I'm going to try that before the next leg day. Maybe that'll help the suck. Yes, it will, Tamika. But most importantly, it will help you afterwards. You know, it will help let be less painful the, the next day and especially the day after that next day when it really typically really sucks, right? We're rolling out to your bed hurts. Going up and down the stairs hurt. Getting out of the chair hurts. Sitting down in the chair hurt. Sitting down to use the toilet in the morning hurts. Right? You remember those days? You're doing a crazy glute work. You go to sit and you're like, ah, ooh, ah. Yeah, exactly. Let the pain motivate you. Let the pain motivate you. Yeah. What, sec, Amethyst, I can't relate with the leg day. Are you skipping leg day, sec? No skipping leg days. We don't skip leg days here. For those of you who don't know, leg day is your biggest calorie burn day. So if you're trying to lose weight, you don't want to be skipping leg days, right? Because remember, on this channel, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. It's all about calories in, calories out. Because we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Exactly. No skipping leg day. No skipping leg day. Do not skip leg day. And if you're a guy, don't skip leg day either. Don't be one of those muscular guys with skinny ass legs. Buenas noches, Uwezimana Angelique. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Tamika, why not? You're murdering leg day, don't you? That's why you can't relate to this poor soul. Let's see. Is she murdering leg day? I don't know. Is Sec Amethyst murdering leg day or is she just not doing leg day? I don't know. Yep, a bit apprehensive taking a pre-word. Yeah, a lot of them are just garbage. They, they, they'll make you feel good. Don't get me wrong. They will get you all hype and everything. But we had a friend who talked about he was being addicted to the damn things, right? Because after a while, it's almost like a crutch. If you don't take a pre-workout, you don't feel like you can work out well. Because it gets you so hype, you're energized, you're ready to go like you're going to burst out your skin. Yeah. see what else we got and i've dropped the link for in case anybody else wants to call up <laughs> yes twerking definitely counts it's a combination of cardio and glute hamstring work <laughs> i do dance at it was other squad not sure if that comes ah okay i guess twerking i don't know if twerking comes yes if that's what you guys are talking about <laughs> ah well, yeah, if sec amateurs, if you're really dancing a lot, then yeah, your, your lower body is probably good. Yeah, yeah. Your lower body is probably good. If you got creaky knees, that's probably that related sec. If you're physically active and you got creaky knees, you know, I remember Sundays I would wake up, move around, and I would go down and feel my knees creak or pop. This is years ago. They don't do that anymore. It's just my dad was sucky. Just my dad's. Oh, here we go. This collagen thing with it. Sec amethyst. The lamas just add some collagen to your protein shake and that'll take care of those knees. I hope you're drinking your protein shake still, sec amethyst. At least the second one, anyway, to get that protein number up. 
Hope you're doing that. Hello, B. Polly. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat. Okay, I think I've covered everything here. Let's see. I don't think there's anything else. If I've missed anybody. I don't think so. Let's see. <laughs> So, of course, if anybody wants to call into the show, anybody else wants to call into the show, got any questions? I'm surprised because I was figuring, aside from needs, watch these questions, I was figuring some of you might have similar questions. Let's see. No, I think I've covered, let's see, new comments scrolling down. What? You've not made your protein shake yet for this week. That is no bueno. <laughs> How are you getting your protein in then, sec? This is not reliable. You got to get your protein in. Got to get your protein in. How are you doing that? Well, B. Pauly, pretty much we talked about the pre the intro and the post workout. Yes, definitely catch the replay. It was pretty good. Especially this the section when needs watch is called in. He asked some good questions and we got more into keeping it simple, basically. So that was good. That was good. Mm-hmm. Hopefully your workouts are going well, B. Pauly. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Let's see, what are high protein greens? Well, protein shakes are high protein greens, right? If you're talking about just veggies, that would be the best high protein green I can think of would be a green protein shake. It's hard to just get a ton of veggies from vegetables. If you're just sitting here eating vegetables, that'd be, it's not impossible, but no, I would not say broccoli or avocados because my definition of high protein B poly is 40 grams. That's my definition. You'd have to eat a hell of a lot of broccoli or avocados to get to that. Let me bring up broccoli and avocados in my fitness pal. No need to guess. Let me bring this up. Do, 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 do. And when I was talking about this thing. I guess I should use it on the show. Let us see, what do they say? Diary, add food, avocado. Avocado. One medium avocado. So one medium avocado, B. Pauly, has three grams of protein, 22 grams of fat. That's a good amount of fat. It's good fat, but it's a lot of fat, right? I mean... I'm typically going somewhere between, depending on my other macros, like 50 to 70 grams of protein. So, you know, you eat two big, two medium sized avocados, so you just get six grams of protein. That's 44 grams of fat. So that's a lot. The broccoli, I'm not even going to look up the broccoli. I know that's not definitely not the thing. Let's look up Brussels sprouts. Tamika says Brussels sprouts. Because what a lot of people consider high proteins is not really high protein. That's that's the issue, right? Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> so five Brussels sprouts are three grams of protein. It's not much calories, four to five calories, which is good. Uh, three grams. It says five sprouts. An entire container, it says 20 sprouts is 12 grams of protein. So I would not consider Brussels sprouts high protein as well. I would not. But you can definitely get your green protein in the form of a protein shake, right? I mean, what I know you can do like peanut butter sandwiches with the peanut butter, you know. Peanut butter is also very popular with bodybuilders, right? So you can try that. I 
And we got a super chat. Hey, thank you for the super chat, positive therapist. Shout out to the positive therapist with the super chat. <laughs> What's the ideal meal for pre-workout and post-workouts? Okay, the ideal meal is a protein that's not high in fat. That way it's digestible, relatively quickly digestible, and carbs that are relatively quickly digestible. And optimally, it would be a mix of really quick, like fruits, so like a handful of fruits, and something that's slower digestion, like, say, a sweet potato, for example. I believe that was an example Jeff gave in the video as well. Regarding the pre-workout, sorry, the protein side of things, again, something not too high in fat, some kind of lean cut of, say, chicken or beef, uh, probably less beef because it's that's still going to have a good amount of fat. Or fish, for example, you know, something that's light, right? Because e e there's some things, what would be a good example? If you eat a piece of white fish, that's going to be lighter on, I mean, in your stomach than, say, a piece of chicken, for example, right? So it's got to be light enough for you that an hour, hour and a half, two hours later, you feel ready to work out. That is not going to create any kind of GI distress or discomfort, Right, you can bend over, you can do things without it creating a problem for you. That'd be the golden rule, right there, is what I would say. Right, that would be what I'm saying, right there. So, I'm looking up high protein vegetables, right? And uh, edamame 18.46 grams per cup, lentils. 17.86 grams per cup. Pinto beans, chickpeas, mung beans, what else? Fava beans, lima beans. So those are some things you could do, B Pauly. All right. The edamame. Yeah, you could definitely do that. So there you go, B Pauly. There'll be some high protein greens. Let's see. New protein shake is 20 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, 120 calories a scoop. Is new protein a green protein, positive therapist? Vega, yes, I've heard of Vega before. I've tried a new protein. It's Vega, plant-based protein and greens, non-GM, although it has a very funny taste. I prefer the whey protein and non-wheat, but it's running low in stock. Okay. I love PB, peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter is a big favorite of bodybuilders. Because those are the protein in there and some fats. So they slather it on some bread or whatnot. So they can get that in there. For sure. <laughs> Okay, so I think today was a pretty good show. Hopefully this wasn't too advanced. I'm glad, really glad Needs Watch is called in because like I said at the beginning, today will be a bit more advanced than just calories in, calories out, and track your meals, right? But if you really want to take things to the next level, this is what you got to do, right? And at first it's complicated and difficult, I know, but eventually it becomes second nature. It's like brushing your teeth, right? You get in a routine, and you'd obviously want to prep your meals in advance, right? It's going to be hard to be in the middle of the day just randomly cooking some food. You want to have something that you could prepare in advance the day before, the weekend before, just as a tip. So all you're doing is heating stuff up or, you know, whipping it up or putting it in a microwave like the oatmeal to make it. But you will, you do want to prep in advance. That is for sure. You, want, you don't want to prep things. No doubt about that part of things, right? You got to prep. If you don't prep, it's going to be very difficult for you. going to be very difficult for you. All right. So, again, great show. So, later is my massive mega long now. For those of you who don't speak Jamaican Patois, that is goodbye, my people. Muy buenas noches.